Hi everyone, Nicola here um, with our lesson. So um, before I start the lesson, I wanted to just talk a little bit about things. So first of all, thank God it's Friday. Today is Friday. I was thinking, this thank God it's Friday thing, did it come from a, a, a Christian? I bet it didn't. What do you think? Maybe we should look it up. Who first stated the words, thank God it's Friday? Could be an atheist <laughs> or someone who doesn't even believe in God, right? It's so funny. Have you noticed that people don't believe in God, but they put his name in everything? Like, stub their toe, oh my God, right? Take God's name in vain, more likely. But still, you know, I wonder, wasn't it a Christian? I keep wanting to say Adventist because that's like the thing in my mouth. I'm Adventist, but like, not everyone is Adventist. And you need to be Adventist to be a Christian, of course. Um, yeah, so I was thinking about that today as I was saying thank God it's Friday I wondered who invented thank God it's Friday um, yeah so the thing I was going to talk about was yesterday or the day before whatever day it was um, I was calculating um, something right so do you always give your tithe and offering as you're supposed to because I've been slacking and so I had asked our treasurer if he could tell me the last time I offered tithing offering and I say last time because it's been so long that I forgot and that's a shame and so I calculated and I was like oh my gosh that's money so I've been robbing God guys like OMG and the thing is he still have been blessing me I can't even begin to enumerate the blessings that I have seen these past months okay um, and so like when I calculated, I was like, oh my gosh. So just yesterday, I, you know, I it was a couple of days ago, I received an email from my job and they're like, um, you have to pick up your check. I'm like, well, what check? I have a check. So then I was thinking that perhaps like, because when you don't clock in properly, they hold your check. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe I hadn't clock in properly this week. So they're going to keep my check for this Friday. So... I waited till today to look at my account because I have automatic, you know, deposit and my check came through and I've been looking that at my, you know, my account and have noticed that my check has been coming through. So I'm like, what check? Maybe I missed one. But in any case, I'm just like, thank you, Jesus. I might go over there and there's a check for $10. <laughs> but listen, I don't care what it's for, even if it's a dollar. It's thank you, Jesus, because that's a dollar I did not have, right? So, yeah, so then I'm planning to, like, add whatever that is to whatever I receive and just give in my tithe and offering all in a bulk. And God have mercy, I'm going to feel it. But guess what? He has been feeling it when I wasn't giving it. So he had patience with me and allowed me to keep my tithe and offering all these months. And I say months. So I, since June. I know it's horrible and so I have an excuse even though excuses are not valid um, so you know I own a summer camp and so I and my aunt we run the summer camp and so the camp is for six weeks and we ask parents to only pay $120 per child for the whole six weeks we have 30 children it doesn't cut it so everything that that does not cover we take out of our pocket and when i say we mostly i so she just comes through when i don't have it for that time um because as a school nurse you're not paid regularly in the summertime like your check is halved so anyway i didn't do it you know like the summer camp it was free for like three years and then that our last the previous year from now we had 59 children and i was like Oh my gosh I like nearly died like they, I had no funds left so I was like I can't you know um, the city restricted us to 25 because of the location that we're in um, they don't have our church um, it's um, Hebron SDA so they don't have a certain thing so they're like you can only go 25 we went over 35 to 25 to 30 because um, like the five kids went to like another camp like a sports camp like half or towards the end and um, some kids traveled abroad so then we had space for five more so we added them but we still registered 30 children 
um, yeah, so it was like a lot. So the camp was over and I had still been, I was still paying, you know, fees that I owed, like the bus and things like that. I'm done now. The only thing I'm paying now is the insurance um, because I have that year round because we take trips with them year round. And so we have to be covered. So just in case anything happens. So anyway, that's the reason why I've been behind on time and offering. And you know, like once, you know, you do it once, then it's like, it just happens, it just keeps happening. Anyway, so I calculated all that I owed, and I was like, ouch, that's going to hurt. Okay, so I'm just like, I have to give it in, because there are blessings for you when you offer your time and offering. And there are curses that go with you not giving it. So I'm glad that God has been winking at my ignorance, my negligence, and has still been blessing me despite of my robbery, my theft. <sighs> but I have to like step up my game and give the man back his money. Right, God? Right. He's patient. I don't know what people have against God because he's like, you know, he does not, as we were saying during the lesson, he does not punish you immediately all the time after sin. Okay, he gives you some time. And, but most times, we waste our chances, right? Okay, so let's get into our lesson. So the lesson, we know we're studying lesson 10. And let's not forget our memory text, which is, As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. That's Isaiah 55 verse 9. Let's pray first. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing us to be here this morning. Bless everyone that is listening. Bless everyone um, that we are connected to. Father, help us to learn something from today's lesson that we may allow to, our, that we may apply to our lives and get closer to you. We are not worthy for all that you do to, for us. We ask that you continue to forgive us of our sins and continue to bestow blessings upon us and those we love. We ask forgiveness for our sins again. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so let's try at remembering this text. As the heavens as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Isaiah 55 verse 9. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Isaiah 55 verse 9. Okay, I cheated a little. Oh, sorry, but anyway, I'm getting there. I hope you got it. Did you? Okay, so Friday. Um, true wisdom comes not from age, but from God. This is the conclusion. In a room full of diverse people, different ages, different cultures, different experiences, who has the most wisdom? Is it the people who have lived in the longest? Is it the people who have suffered the most? Or is it people who gain their wisdom from a heavenly source of knowledge? The age of the person does not always determine their knowledge or wisdom. In this lesson, we have learned about Elihu's determination to acknowledge God as the supreme source of knowledge and wisdom. Elihu's young age did not keep him from knowing, from looking to God for answers. And in his youth, he teaches an important lesson to Job and his doubting friends. Focus on God for true wisdom. Let's read Job 32 verse 6 through 9, where that comes from. So Elihu's son of Barakel, the Buzite, said, I am young in years, and you are old. That is why I was fearful, not daring to tell you what I know. I thought age should speak, advanced years should teach wisdom. But it is the spirit in a person, the breath of the Almighty, that gives them understanding. It is not only the old who are wise, not only the aged who understand, what is right so um i remember there was a lesson a very long time ago while i was in nursing school that talked about wisdom and knowledge and 
I made the declaration then, and they're making it now, that it is not only the old that is wise, you know, who are wise. And I truly believe that. I believe that even a child can teach you. And God says that in the Bible. He says a child will lead them, right? Because it is not the person in and of themselves that have knowledge, you know, that has knowledge. It is God who places the words in your heart and he's the one that speaks through your mouth, right? So he says, do not fear what you're going to say. I will put the words in your mouth. So if he puts the word in your mouth and knowledge in your heart and wisdom in your understanding, then it's not coming from you. So my, my dad and I, we had an argument once and he was talking about something and then, you know, I said whatever I said and he says, you know, who are you to teach me? I said, Dad, okay, first of all, you put me to college so that I can have knowledge, right? And so I can learn something that you do not know of yet, right? Because the ages have gone, you know, time has passed. He's a doctor and, you know, he's a theologian, but I can know something that you don't and I can share that, right? And I said, that I have a little sister and at the time she was like 13. And I was like, even Christy could teach both of us. You know, I've been to college and Christy was at the time in elementary school, you know. And I'm like, she can teach us. As a matter of fact, God says, be like the little child. And he says that because he knows that we can learn through the character of children. You know, the things that they do, the things that, the way that they are, we can learn from them. And they haven't had experience per se. They haven't, you know, gone to school and... Um, acquired degrees and such but God says to imitate them right uh, so age does not bring on knowledge and I'm sure you have known a lot of adults you know who have made mistakes that you in your younger years would have never thought or fathom to commit and so it's not about age it's about God right and that's one of the reasons why God was so favorable towards Solomon because when he asked Solomon what would you like Solomon said you know I've had I have this huge population of people and I don't know how to lead them so give me wisdom so I know what to do and God said since you did not ask for anything else you could have but you didn't I will give you wisdom and you will be the most you know the wisest man in the land and there will be none like you ever not before and not after and definitely not during right you're still on the earth and so you know wisdom does not come with age uh, it does not even come with experience because there are people who go through the same thing over and over and over and they repeat it continuously right they know it's not going to work because it hadn't work worked and they it, it, it did not work and so yet they still continue to do it. And that's why we have a saying, if you continue to do something over and over and it doesn't work, and you continue to do it, that means you're crazy, right? So experience does not necessarily bring on wisdom. It says wisdom comes from God. And that's what I was just saying. God tells us what to do, when to do it, how to do it. So when I was in nursing school, I had trouble um, my second year studying i was studying like every which way that i thought how that i could think of and nothing was coming out of it like i was still not doing well on my exams and so i was like god like you have to help me and so i found or i stumbled upon a a text james 1 verse 5 that says god and give it wisdom right and he gives it gives it unbraided and he unbraided not so he does not hold it back but when you ask for it, you have to believe that you're going to get it and not waver because those who waver, they don't stand or anything and he won't give it to you otherwise. So I use that text every time I was going to study for nursing. Every time I opened a book, I would read that text. And then during the summer, I had to sit out for a summer um, because I didn't pass my nursing class. And so I had to repeat it. And it took me a long time to actually verbalize those words, but right? like me? not be able to pass what and so i didn't and so i sat out and during the summertime i was like god like what what, what happened like 
you know, I was third in my class in high school, you know, I was in British in medicine, going to this school, everyone thinks I'm smart, and I believe me to be smart, so what, what do 